Okay, I believe we are recording. All right, so 8B Civic students, this is Mr. McGravy coming at you remotely from uh, my house in Melrose, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to continue the Civics in Action speaker series. Um, and today I have town manager, um, uh, M Melissa Murphy Rodriguez. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, everybody. I'm here in my office in North Andover, practicing social distancing. One at a time, we're in here, but everybody's doing good. Oh, good. So you're in your office. You're in your I office. Am. I recognize your office. So you're right in your <laughs> office on Main Street. Yes. Business must continue, right? So here Business we are. Business continue. So <laughs> um, I'm going to just give you a, just a couple icebreakers like we did when you came in um, back in September. It seems so long ago. Um, and then you could just touch upon them. And then I'm really, really happy that 8B students generated questions. I had over 25 questions uh, sent to me and I, I weeded them down to a reasonable list. So first of all, introduction. Um, you did tell us at the Civics in Action talk that you know, you're not only the town manager, you're a wife, you're a daughter, you're a mom. Um, just tell us how you're doing. How's the family going? How, how's everything going? We're doing good. So, you know, my husband and I both work in municipal government. Um, so that makes it interesting. He's with the city of Medford. So we're both trying to juggle, making sure that we're getting all of our tasks done here, as well as making sure that the kids at home are safe and being remotely educated, doing our best, right? And, and I think um, your best is the best that anyone can expect right now. And, and you have two little girls, is that correct? I do. So they're five and seven. Uh, oh. Julia's in first grade and Emma is in preschool. Um, They've got lots of remote learning going on, just like this at home too. Lots of crying about it. Hopefully your eighth graders aren't crying about it too. Not that um, I've heard of. Um, <laughs> if, if I could ask you a parenting question, um, because I think the parents are gonna be watching, I'm gonna put this on social media. Um, I have an 11 year old and a nine year old. So they're somewhat independent, but my wife and I were talking the other, the other night about what it would be like to have toddlers or little ones or babies How's that going? I mean, like they want to be out, they want to go to the playground, they want all these things. Like, how how's that going? I think it's hard, um, and I think it's okay that it's hard, and I think it's okay to admit that it's hard. The other day, my um, seven year old daughter was like, "I hate this," and I'm like, "You know what? <laughs> I hate it too, <laughs> and that's okay, right? We yeah. all hate it, right?" And I think that's a normal way to feel. It's almost. In some ways, I think younger kids need more attention, but I think it may be harder for the older kids to understand um, why they can't stay home, right? They have their own emotions and feelings yeah. and sentiments about things that I can tell my seven-year-old we're not doing this and she may complain, but that's the end of it, right? But right. negotiating with a 11, 12 or 13-year-old, I think is a lot harder. Okay, all right. So we gotta, we, we gotta take our wins and losses in both our mm -hmm. categories, I guess. That's a good point. Um, so obviously you're in your office, so we kind of answered the, ne the next question, but if you don't mind, could you, like, obviously you're the town manager and as we learn, you know, in town government versus city government, which would be like a mayor, um, take us through like a week or a day. How many times a day do you go into the office? What's your day like? Um, if you wouldn't mind giving us a little play by play in your leadership role in terms of your schedule, uh, that would be great. Every day is very different. Um, I'm lucky, I have an amazing team um, who have really come together to support the town, right? In ways that I don't think any of us had ever anticipated. Um, and we've had to kind of quickly change the way that we operate, which has mm -hmm. been hard. So a lot of the team is working remotely. Um, you're not here at all. Some people are here one or two days a week because they have jobs where they have to get the mail or they have to process vouchers or payroll. Um, and there's other people who are here every single day, like our police, our fire, DPW, who 911, who have been here day in and day out supporting the community. Um, you know, we're serving meals three days a week. We're running a food pantry, which is something I never thought we'd be doing. Um, wow. You know, so we're doing, still doing meal delivery. We're grocery shopping for people who can't get out to grocery shop. Hmm. We're running this COVID-19 hotline, um, and I've been answering we have seven different um, options. I answer one of them uh, along with the Board of Health um, staff. And so a lot of it's that. And those calls sometimes come in you know, late at night with people who just need someone to talk to or who don't have formula for their baby. Um, and so it's it's been a really interesting so, time. So not that you go to college to be a town manager, but I'm guessing that 
college did or, or your experiences prior to this didn't really prepare you. This is something that you're doing on the spot right, right. away. So, so just like I think you, right, and in, um, in the parents at home and the kids at home, we're not, I, I, I've said to a lot of parents who have said to me, it's really hard to homeschool. And I said, you know what, we're not homeschooling. We're crisis schooling, right? We're not really doing regular government right now. We're doing crisis government. And we've wow. had to change and adapt to do that, right? And, and it's hard, it's not easy. And we're not always doing it right. And we're learning from it every day. But I think that we're doing the best that we can. And I think people in town have been really appreciative of that. And, and it's funny, you know, I think, I mean, I think I've been doing a pretty good job with my classes and the kids have been giving me good feedback. But, you know, I got an email yesterday from a student who I respect tremendously and she was very honest. She was like, Mr. McGravy, I, you know, what you're doing is good, but she was kind of insinuating we need to take it to the next level. And what she wanted was more FaceTime and more interaction. Um, so obviously I think I like the way that you're you're saying that we're doing this, and I think it's it's changing what I was doing, and I'm sure what you were doing four weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and what we're going to be doing next week is going to be different. So I think that's a healthy attitude to have. Um, I'm not in government, and you know I don't represent the town of North Andover. I'm a teacher, but I'm hearing from my students and some things out there a lot of misconceptions. Um, do you want to address? You don't. You could take a pass on this one if you want, Melissa. Do you want to address uh, any misconceptions that maybe some things have been said in the uh, community that perhaps are not accurate? Um, so I think it would be easier if I knew what they were. I, you know, one of the things that I think we have tried to do is over communicate, and I don't even think you can over communicate right now. Right, it's impossible to over communicate. People just want information, um, and they want good information. And there is a lot of bad information out there, right? Like if you're on Facebook and you're on social media and you're sharing some of the articles you're reading, um, it would be very easy to get kind of swamped up into this misinformation. And so I would encourage people to we have a um, we have a text line that you can actually text to sign up and get alerts from the town. Get your information from the CDC, get your information from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, get your information from our Department of Public Health, and really make sure that what you're learning is valid. Because there's a lot of invalid information out there. People love to scare people in times of crisis, and that's a terrible thing, right? And they love to scam people. That's another thing that we're seeing now. So I think making sure that you're getting good, valid information is really important. Like yesterday, um, Brian, who's our board of health director, went down to North Over Over Cam and he filmed a presentation on how to use your protective personal equipment. And I found out I've been wearing gloves wrong for the last three weeks. I've been taking off wrong. I found out yesterday, right? I mean, so I think that finding that information and really absorbing it is important right now. Okay, great. I I, I think that's great. And uh, obviously, big shout out to North Andover Cam. Uh, they were working with me on this project. Their civics working with you they're amazing and amazing. going on their YouTube channel is very easy access for not only my students but their parents to get all of these reliable um, things I, I, and the mayor the mayor of um, Melrose uh, give a shout out to mayor Paul Pro, Paul Broder he's been doing those every day too and uh, it's it's been great to watch those okay so the next one's tough it might be a little emotional so obviously you know, obviously, I, I know with my students and with students all out in North Andover, and I know you're doing a great job. You and Dr. Gilligan have such a great relationship. Um, if you could give a message to NAMS middle schoolers who maybe are nervous or anxious during these difficult times, um, it can be brief, but what, what, what would you say to them? So I would say that we're all nervous and anxious. And anybody that's telling you they're not nervous and anxious is not telling you the truth. And it's okay to be nervous and anxious because we don't know. This is an unknown. And it's something that we're all grappling with every day, right? So you can be the kind of person that pretends you're not nervous and anxious and pushes it all down and lets it all build up, right? Or you can be the type of person that takes that nervous anxiety and puts it into something good. And I hope you're the kind of people that put it into something good. So for me, what I'm trying to do right now is close my exercise ring on my Apple Watch every day, right? I've never done that before. I have exercised 30 years. I've exercised more in the last 30 days than I have in the last 30 years. But you know what? I'm going out, I'm walking, I'm riding a bike, and then at the end of the day, I'm sleeping, right? Yeah. When before I was doing that, I wasn't. I was staying up at night, I was grinding my teeth, and I was nervous about it. 
So it's okay to feel nervous and it's okay to talk to people about it because maybe your friends or your parents or your grandparents or your siblings are afraid to talk to you about how nervous they are. And maybe if you open that conversation, everybody will start talking about it. I, yeah. I appreciate that honesty. So to my students out there who are feeling nervous or anxious, the town manager is feeling that way. Me, Mr. McGrady, I'm feeling the exact same way. I'm sure Dr. Gilligan is feeling that way. Um, you know, Principal Gonsalve, all of them. So we're all, you know, you know, I keep quoting this horrible high school musical quote, we're all in this together, but I feel guilty saying it, but it's true. Uh, yeah. As cheesy as it is, it's true. Um, okay, so I have students, uh, questions from students, and if that's okay, I'm gonna have them. The, the first one is very specific. So the person who wrote it is gonna know that, that it's being asked. And then the remainder are very, very general. So um, the question is, has the town thought of people passing each other on sidewalks? Because many people have been running or walking but not following the six feet apart rule. Could we maybe make it so that, let's just, if you're, you're, you're going on a hill or you're pass on the right, pass on the left, keeping that distance. Um, I think that's a very realistic thing. I walk with my boys every day. I don't know the answer to that question. What, what would your opinion be on that? So I think first I would say that I want people to realize that wearing a mask is not a replacement for being six feet apart from people, right? And I think that that's kind of a misconception now that we're seeing everybody outside wearing masks, which is great. It is not to replace social distancing. I myself, when I'm out walking, I kind of move to the other side of the street if I see someone yes. coming. That's not always possible, right? So the Board of Health last week um, actually voted to implement one-way walking on the track and at the common. So they want everybody basically walking in the same direction instead of coming at each other. That was something that they had seen that they thought was problematic. We put those signs up yesterday, so I'll be interested to see if people do follow that advisory. It is only an advisory, right? Um, the hard part with something like implementing uh, walking up hill one way and downhill the other way it's commonsensical right like it seems like common sense to me but it's very difficult to enforce right so we can't have the police out enforcing people walking in one direction so all we can do is just encourage people to do it so for the student that asked that question you can kind of tell a white lie to your friends and say the signs went up because of your question to the mm -hmm. town manager right we can all roll with that uh Okay, so I love this next question. This is a very thoughtful person that asked this. And I know you're all about this, so I, I'm looking forward to your answer. What's the best way we can su support small businesses during the COVID-19 crisis? What a great question. So you know we have this small business grant program that we've rolled out, which is awesome. And we're doing this um, amazing grant, basically, that you apply for through the town. It's through the Columbia Gas Restoration money. And it will pay one month's rent or mortgage for a business that's been negatively impacted by COVID-19. And I think that's going to go a long way. Um, one thing I would suggest is keep getting takeout. I know I am. Um, a lot of places are doing curbside. I have to kind of offset all that biking and uh, walking I'm doing by eating, but it's fine. Um, you know, so keep doing your curbside takeout. Buy gift cards if you can. You know, if there's a business that's maybe not open right now or that you can't get to or you're nervous to go to buying a gift card online or calling and ordering a gift card that you'll use later infuses that money into the business right now, which is really important. Yesterday I needed um, something from Rose and Dove. So I called, I told her what I was looking for. She sent me pictures of what she had that matched that. I paid on the phone. I picked it up in my car wearing a mask and got what I needed. So there's ways to get around it and I encourage you to be creative. That's great. Um, so I am, uh, I'm not going to, put you on the spot about school. I, I don't think that's a fair thing to do. But what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of like go around that question. And that is in terms of Governor Baker and you and the, the superintendent and other mayors and town managers, um, the process, have you been involved in, 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 in any way giving feedback to them about going back? Like, is there a process in the decision making or are you not part of that? So every Sunday, um, the mayors and managers have a big um, Zoom meeting. So over 100 of us that come together and talk. Um, sometimes the lieutenant governor comes onto the call, um, sometimes people from DPH, and they hear from us what our concerns are. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that we do on that call is we actually have a, call, a doctor from Mass General who comes every week 
it shows us where the curve is. Um, wow. And so, so that's been really interesting. Um, one of the things that I will say is that from watching that curve and watching that movement, um, if we had not started social distancing, according to this doctor at Mass General, we would have been beyond Italy at this point. Wow. Currently, we're not. So we're seeing improvements. Wow. We're heading towards a peak, but we're seeing improvements. Okay. Um, they're saying now that they think that peak will be more in the late April 20s, not so much around April 20s like they thought before. So I don't know when we'll be back to school. Um, I wish I did, right? Yeah, I wish right. I did for my own thing too. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that, you know, I don't know that May 4th is, is realistic, um, okay. considering that they're saying the peak is now later in April. Okay. I think we'll probably hear more from the governor next week. Okay, great, awesome. Um, so obviously I know you're in communication with other departments, the police chief, the fire chief, uh, public works and all that stuff. They're out and around town a lot more than, than anyone else is. So I have a student that says, um, what is the reports about like our town residents mostly complying with the social distance advisory? Um, what's the, what, what, what are the reports that you're getting from, from all the people in town? The reports that I'm getting are the town residents are doing a great job. They're doing a great job. For a while, we were a little bit concerned, not gonna lie, about our open spaces. Um, you know, we, we were seeing kind of groups of kids maybe still meeting and playing lacrosse or playing basketball, um, which is why we put out that social distancing with the An North Andover night. I don't know if you've seen those signs, but we yes. had some signs made up that have the North Andover night showing the six feet. Um, and also why we put out the North Andover um, social distancing video in art contest um, so that we could try to, you know, appeal to people who maybe weren't hearing our message. Um, but over, I'd say, the last 10 days, we've really seen people practicing good social distancing, wearing their masks, being respectful in stores. Um, and that goes a really long way on building morale for the staff because they can't stay home, right? They have to come here every single day and work for us. And so when they see everyone in town doing the right thing, it really makes them feel good. Good. Well, that's great to hear. Um, this is, uh, I thought this was, um, I don't want to use the word humorous, but I thought this was a very thinking outside the box question. And that's what I love about my students. They think outside the box and, and this one's pretty frank. And I, 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 I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna say it. Um, <laughs> I think I know the answer, but I'll just say it. Can we, can members of the town residents make a citizen's arrest or report out something if they spot someone in non-compliance of the social distance advisory? I know you can't do a citizen's arrest, but what would you recommend if you're out and you see some bad stuff going on? Um, let's say you see a bunch of kids at the youth center playing or tackling each other. What, what, what's the protocol for doing that, Melissa, when you sure. see them? So I wouldn't encourage anybody to tackle anybody. <laughs> um, but the one thing I would encourage is if you do see people who you think, especially if you know them, if you know people and they're not practicing good social distancing, education goes a long way, right? And so sometimes maybe just a reminder, you know, there's an illness, you know, there's a virus going around and they're in CDC's encouraging us all to be six feet apart from each other. And the governor's banned anybody from coming together in gatherings of more than 10. Maybe they don't know, right? Maybe they need a friendly reminder. Sometimes we all forget. However, if you see people who are blatantly not doing the right thing, you can either call the um, business line at the police department or call the COVID-19 hotline. We have a lot of people who are calling the COVID-19 hotline and saying, you know, there's a group of 25 people here or my there's a gathering of more than 10. And we are trying to go out and talk to those people to explain that's not OK. OK, that's great. So I'm going to we, we've been going on 20 minutes now and uh, the kids are only allowed to do 30 minute lesson a day. So I, I want to stick to that. So uh, the last question I'm going to ask you, I think, is a really good reflection question. I know you're a very reflective person. Um, what do you feel you have accomplished um, throughout all of this? What and I, I guess you can't say you've accomplished, but your team have accomplished. Yeah. What are some things you're feeling really good about in the past four weeks that you consider accomplishments for you and your staff and the town of North Andover? I think that's a good way to end. So I have, I think it's twofold. I mean, one, I'm really proud of what we've done for our staff. Um, there's a lot of communities that have been talking about doing furloughs um, that have really created kind of insecurity amongst their staff. And I think we've been very supportive to our staff. And I'm really, furlough means a layoff. In case people yeah, can you tell the kids what a furlough is? Because yeah. I'm probably in their background vocabulary. Sure, furlough means a layoff. Um, and so, there, you know, there's, there's teachers and um, 
employees in towns, other towns that don't have that same job security. They may be a part-time or they're janitorial staff that aren't full-time or lunch ladies who aren't getting paid in other communities. And Superintendent Gilligan and I have worked together to make sure that that's not happening in North Andover, right? Because that's not good for anybody. These are our residents, these are our team members, these are our community and we wanna support them. Um, and so that has felt really good for me. And then the second thing that I'm so proud of is really the COVID-19 hotline and the food security making sure people have the resources that they need um, in order to get diapers, formula, lunch every day, um, the social emotional aspects of that. You know, one day at the um, food bank, we handed out books. I mean, just making sure people have what they need to continue to have that food security and not feel insecure in their homes has been really, really important part of what we're doing. That's great. Well, I think that's a good way to end. I want to say I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to to do this. I think it's great, and um, I'm gonna. I, I have some a couple more things I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna let you get back to your job and what you're doing. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Stay positive. Keep your head up, and we're here for you if you need us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. -bye. All right. Well, I have to say that I thought that went really, really well. I didn't tell. Um, Miss Murphy uh, Rodriguez, I uh, got the tie on. Uh, I haven't worn a tie since uh, March 12th. It's been a betting a long time. So I know this is going over and I know you're only doing 30 minutes a day, but I wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to a really awesome program in the community. I think a lot of you know it because it does involve an, an AP student who's a very, very positive, upbeat person. And I am just going to say that I would like to talk very, very briefly about the Matthew Hardy Mito Classic, which is always in the spring of 2020. I think most of you know about the Mito Classic, but for people on social media and parents that don't, I'm going to just give a little plug to their organization. First of all, I'd like to say, as I said in the sign, um, love the Hardy family. Uh, they're three for three AP kids. Rebecca, the first, Michael, and then Gabby now, just three great kids and their parents and what they're doing, uh, turning a negative into a positive. You could even say it's a civics action project and maybe Gabby can talk to her parents and her siblings about that because they did, I wasn't their civics teacher, I was their social studies teacher. So I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the, the Matthew Hardy Mito Classic, if that's okay. So, and Hardy family, these are not very good signs. I apologize, uh, your website and all your social media has been so great. So. This is to raise awareness and some donations money to support kids living with mitochondrial disease and fund North Andover scholarships. Um, a mitochondrial disease is definitely something that um, is relevant and, and, and affects kids. Um, I'm not a medical expert, but I'm going to give you some resources that will tell you more about what mitochondrial disease is. Um, sadly, the Hardys lost their son and brother. Um, Matthew to this disease a few years ago and they've tried to honor him um, with his name and organization helping other people which I think is very just big mad respect to the Hardy family I, I, I just think what you're doing is amazing so where do you come in yes that is a sad face there's no hockey tournament. There is a hockey tournament every April, but the Hardy family are going to continue virtually. Uh, I know yesterday was a big, big thing for it with um, posting physical activity and what they would like you to do, and you could still do it now, it can still live on, is I'm gonna just pop it right there. If you could have a video or a photograph of you doing some type of physical activity with your families, your siblings, your dog, your pet, and do the hashtag move for Mito or hashtag MHMC. That would be great. Uh, what I'm coming to now also is videos are lovely and pictures are lovely, but I think donations would be great. I know there are so many charitable organizations right now. I think this is a very worthy, worthy cause. And not only is the cause worthy, but what they do with the money is awesome. So I have made these signs that you can all see. Please post and honestly, let's donate to the um, Hardy family and the Mito Classic. 
by either going on Venmo at Mito Action, so that's Venmo at M I T A C T I O N, or their website. You can learn so much about it, and you can make donations. MitoAction.org slash M H M C slash. I'm going to pop those up there one more time so you can see them. All right, so very briefly, I got this all from the website. Obviously, I've, I've known the Hardy family for a while, so I, I know this, but I wanted, didn't want to misspeak for them. So they have raised $40,000 to support the Matthew Hardy Camper Fund. 400 children have attended camp, and 35 students with this mitochondrial disease um, have gotten scholarships for college and universities. Um, so I just think that's amazing. All right, so this video has gone on very long, but I, I also want to say that uh, the Hardy family, this is a civic action project. You are letting people know about this mitochondrial disease and you're, you're, you're fighting and obviously you're doing amazing things with it. So a big thank you to the Hardy family. And one more time, plug for them. All right. Remember, Venmo at M-I-T-A-C-T-I-O-N, Venmo at MitoAction, or their website, MitoAction.org, slash M-H-M-C, slash, one more time. Okay, so this was a very, very long one. I don't know if you've noticed, but I put a tie on. Uh, and um, this tie, is a big shout out to my BFF, Mrs. Judy Negrelli, who gave me the Obi-Wan Kenobi tie back in 1997. She gave one to uh, Mr. Bill Smith, the math teacher in seventh grade, who's the best, and Mr. Daniel Roy, who was an eighth grade a social studies teacher, went on to become vice principal, and then he left, and he's out in Western Mass now. So shout out to Judy, Bill, and Dan as well. I uh, hope you and your family are doing well. All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be safe, be well, and um, I'll see you in civics class. Thank you so much. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to do three things at once. See you later.